There's the bell, folks. Here we go. And look at this. Yuri just running right into it. He's spine buster by Mitch. Now Mitch trying to follow up with it. But Yuri is so pissed off and he's just going right for the team's exchange here. And look at this. over and hits that huge standing sea fire there. This isn't the first time these two men actually ever fought one on one. In fact, the last time these two men fought one on one, Mitch actually buried Yuri. But that was like well over a year. More than a year ago, and Yuri Lowell has grown so much more since then. He's gotten so more, much more over, more accomplished here in the since then too. He's back then, he was still a tag team wrestler. Like this, Yuri is so unorthodox with all these high-flying athletic maneuvers, but now falls up with a vice grip. I mean, ever since Yuri Lowe was forced to get a singles career after the loss of Sai put, put Raven on the limit reserve after they, he got hobbled in that urban death match at Beach Party Slam, Yuri started his singles career and then was a few months into he became a no limits champion. And Yuri is now looking to regain the no limits championship. But first he's going to take, go through Mitch, his rival here. Maybe he might be looking for a pass that we from Alex Richard at some point in the near future. I don't really see any type of friendly rot, any type of friendly competition here going on. So it's safe to say that these men are not allies anymore. It was just an alliance of circumstance back in Square Despair, as you heard Yuri say earlier on in that interview. Now these two men work together to face Murphy Law because they both have that common enemy of the franchise nation. Now look at this. Mitch wants to go into his patented Texas pile drivers spiking Yuri. Now how sick in the end here. It's going to be embarrassing for Yuri to just take away so easily. And look at this. And he hits that huge cyclone. Mitch can position him in the middle of the ring and get a turn him over for a pin. This could be all she wrote here. Look at this elbow right in the face here. Look at this. Only a two count though. We also heard in the interview. And Yuri Lowell, he said given the opportunity, he would also desire that master ring. Now look at this. Oh, it's that awkward looking splash there. Fall up with a pin attempt here. I'm kind of curious to see what Yuri Lowe would use the Master Reaper if he won it. Oh look at that, that huge... I guess that missed time to attack. They're knocking both the men on contest, but now they're flying back up. And Mitch Watson had a huge opportunity to back at Scrogus, but he was actually the 15th and final participant in the Scrogus Room matchup. He was in with the likes of Alex Rickers, Murphy Law, and Plan and excellent help. Someone like Mitch Watterson, who's been looking for a title match opportunity in the past, was so close to actually getting that by if he only managed to win Scrooge to Spit, but I guess he I guess Scrooge was not Mitch Watterson's night. I mean, Mitch Watterson was probably a very historic moment being the very last participant in the absolute best of the UWA. And look at this. Very well hit, going for the destruction field here. Ten steps here of pain and punishment, as you guys would call it. Folks in all parts of the anatomy. Look at this. Oh my! Hits that huge reverse CDT. Oh, and Mitch kipping up here. Kind of shades of the last time these two men fought one on one. Oh, this Mitch flying all over the ring here, trying to mount some sort of comeback. Oh, that huge, huge clothesline turning Mitch Wilson inside out. Getting your Knock him out of his boots there. But only getting a two count. Oh, look at this. Oh, come on. Is Murphy Law coming out here? Come on, someone, someone get this asshole out. He has no business being in this matchup. Come on, ref. Come on, Robert Sweet. Do something. Get him out of here. I mean, you're in low. Mitch has so much animosity. He doesn't even mind the fact that Murphy Law is out there. Either that or they just don't notice him. I can't really notice some, uh, if he's notice him now. That he's all right. He's in the ring now. He has a table. And the, oh, look at this. Oh, oh goes right for Mitch Watterson. And the match is officially ruled out because of a 
interference on the battle of both of these men, but I've yet to hear Ayuna fail. Oh my god, Murphy Lawn is stupid. Mitchell is like 15 feet in and land right on that flat ass table. And Murphy Lawn is taking the fight to both Yuri and Mitch. Good. So this is how the circle of Murphy Laws and Murphy Law eliminated almost the Murphy Law eliminated the most individuals in the Spur to Spur matchup. And trust me, in the Spur to Spur matchup, we have only 15 people compete versus 30, and we have to, have to pin, submit, or knock out people. Even eliminating three people is a lot of eliminations. And look at this! Oh, that huge front slam by Murphy Law. I don't know how real is even going to get up after that one. Mitch trying to attempts at Murphy Law and all the absolute failure. Captain Crowsons by Murphy Law taking Yuri's head off. And look at that, that last one, throwing Yuri right through the freaking table. And now Mitch in a bad place. He gets slammed down that huge power bomb. Kind of shades up the last match we had that triple threat earlier. And now look at this. Murphy Law going for total mutilation here on the Yuri Low as he's of course borrowed. Super Saiyan Broly's finisher. It's almost as if Miss Washington is enjoying Yuri being destroyed here. But I guess, despite Mitch's troubles, he gets taken down to that huge maneuver there by Murphy Law. And now he's Irish whipping Yuri in the corner, that huge kick. Oh, that huge knee taking down Mitch Watterson. We don't even get any freaking security out of all this. And Yuri gets set for a ride there as well. I mean, God, it's like Murphy Laws is just, I never seen so much devastation ever like this. Look at this. Oh, it hits final impact on the Mitch Watterson. And now just throws Yuri Low like a piece of trash on the outside. And Murphy Law staying tall here. Obviously doing the dirty work of the franchise nation here. Taking out two of the defensive both want that master ring. Now I don't know what the mindset of Mitch Waters and her Yuri is going to be after this pure devastation by Murphy Law here. Oh, well, we gotta go backstage. The two of them facing Alex Richards. And Buffy up next. Folks, well, let's go backstage. Look at this, surprisingly, the score is not even at all pissed about being eliminated by Luke Fowler. Oh no. Yeah, but here he comes. I'm talking about the one man nation, Vaughn Creed. Here he comes. 
Bonkinos coming out by himself. Man, at first I kind of thought Bonkinos was going to be coming out for the main event. Like, we're seeing Bonkinos by himself here. That was what Bonkinos won half the men that was the team that that for the story we're probably facing later on here tonight. Saw backstage the destroyer. He wants to try to prove that what happened at Twitter was not a miracle. Fighting this like twice. He wants to see Luke Fowler prove all the step as well here tonight on the song. He wants to see Luke Fowler finally ever for the third time that he think that will be a charm and defeat Alex Hitler here tonight and become the new Nolan Miss champion. Speaking of championships, and Ron Creed now is simply have the best of timing at Square to Spare. And right after the Space Cowboys, Gene Stalin and Spy, one of the top from the Lost Society, Ron Creed now is going to cash in one of the two pending title contracts with the briefcase. And Gene Stalin being the smart man that he is, which prevent Ron Creed to pull off that crap that he's known famous for. Got himself actually intending to disqualify for the franchise name actually walking with egg on their head. Looking like complete idiots. Ghost of Wickedness, Von Creed actually calling out the Enigma. Well, folks, if you saw Squirrel this we finally got some damn mantras between what's going on between these two viciouses. And these are two completely different individuals. Of course, this man right here is known as simply the Enigma. Do not, folks, both the Enigma and Vicious. Knew each other in the Red Dragon more than 10, 15 plus years ago. Apparently, these two had some sort of rivalry going back in the Red Dragon, where every time the Enigma would be going, getting all the, be doing the deeds, doing all the work, Vicious would be picking up the notoriety, taking the credit, and because of Vicious, in fact, he was seeing more more, more, more charismatic, he got all the attention. And because of that, the Enigma decides, you know, fuck, I'm going to go to the NLW to become a professional wrestler that's what I always wanted to become. Of course, back then, before he was the before he was vicious, he was sitting the Soul Keeper. Quite frankly, he didn't really do much with that persona. He just took his persona, stole Vicious' name and look. And because of that, back then, he was vicious under, the, under his assuming of vicious. A few times former great champion, he may have been a family on two separate occasions, made a historic career, even ushering the vicious era in 2005. That all came to an abrupt end at Pinwheel 9 when he lost the match against Vampiro in that Inferno match. He's gone for three months. He fought Vicious to sing in right here, came back with the old fighter gimmick, but that was just Vicious, the Cowboy Bebop Vicious, the Vicious that's in the Fairgrounds Nation, the vi he's some of the people with prosthetics to make himself look like this Vicious right here, aka the Enigma, and he's been in a identity war between these two men ever since.